Hello and welcome to the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York Show. I am Michael Pinter. Oh boy, I don't look so good. Um, this is a show where I teach you how to start flipping or wholesaling houses in New York or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. So, uh, I had a very general question today. How, how to invest money in real estate? Very, very general, right? So there's a lot of different ways to invest money in real estate. So we're going to talk about, at the end, sort of how to invest money in ways that I invest in real estate, but you can also talk about... Um, there's there's just so many ways. So the, I mean, one of the most obvious ways to invest money in real estate is to um, buy into a REIT, a real estate investment trust fund. Right. A lot of these funds are very easy, uh, simple. They're exchange traded. They're liquid, and um, they give very high yields. They have to pass through a huge portion of their profits to the shareholders, so they yield pretty high. That is the easiest way to invest in real estate. Now. Uh, some of the other ways you invest in real estate is you can buy a buy and hold properties, right? You can buy a property and you can uh, keep it and it hopefully will cash flow positive. Now, one of the, a couple of things that I've been talking about that are important before you buy a buy and hold property, something you're going to hold uh, is two things. The first is you have to buy it at a... What just happened? Did I just switch? I think I just switched cameras. Sorry. Apologize. Um... The first is it has to be, you have to buy at a significant discount. Now, this is strange for a lot of people, right? People come to my office and say, oh, I found the buy and hold property. It's worth $450. i am buying it for 420 And I'm like, that's not a good deal. Now, why is that not a good deal? You have to buy it at a significant discount. I'm talking about like 30% off what it's going to be worth because you want to get your money out of the property so that you can do it again, right? Now, if you want to do one property in your life, that's great. Um, but if you don't, then you have to buy it at a significant discount. So just an example. Let's say the example that person brought from you. The property was worth 450 She's to buy it at 450. She's got to buy if it's worth 450. She's got to buy it around 300 so that when she gets it stabilized and the uh, rent and the tenants are there, <clears throat> she can then get an appraisal on it for 450 and take out 70 percent of the money, which is all the money she put in. Get all her money out so she can do this whole process again. You need to buy it at a significant discount. The second thing you need to know about buy and hold properties is that you need to be significantly cash flow positive. So I know a lot of people who are buying tons of single-family rentals, and they're saying, even if I'm $100 cash flow positive, I'm fine. I don't see it that way. Now, the idea I guess the idea is that they're going to hold it for appreciation, but we're, we're probably at the top of the market now, close to the top of the market. It's impossible to predict where the real estate market is going to go over time, and it's also impossible to predict where the real estate market is going to be when you might need to sell it. So um, you have to be significantly cash flow positive because if you're not significantly cash flow positive, and significantly is a very subjective term, but if you're not significantly cash flow, I say like $1,000 a month cash flow positive, which I know is very hard at other places. I want to talk about the difference between doing this in New York and in other states. If you're not significantly cash flow positive, the problem is that you are one capital expenditure away from being cash flow negative. So if you're making $100 a month positive on a property and the roof needs to be replaced and that could be $8,000, you're not, you're cash flow negative for the next couple of years. If you're cash flow positive on a property, property $100 a month and then the refrigerator and the oven blow out and you need to replace them, you're not cash flow positive anymore. So you need to be significantly cash flow positive. Now, a lot of single family properties in most states outside New York, I don't know, most states, a lot of states um, are able to be cash flow positive because the taxes are super low, a few hundred dollars a year. Um, you can buy them at a discount, uh, you know, $100,000. And if you're getting a decent rent, $1,000 a month or something, you be cash flow positive. In New York, in most, almost all parts of New York City metropolitan area, um, and I operate in Long Island, then it's very hard for a single family to be cash flow positive. Almost impossible because the prices are very high. So the debt service is a lot, right? You're gonna have to take a mortgage out on and pay and pay debt service on the mortgage. And the taxes are very high, right? It's very common in our area to have a thousand dollars a month in taxes. Right? These are things that are not common in other areas. So um very hard for it to be cash flow positive in New York, but positive in other places. Now, regardless the capital expenditures are going to be similar, right? It's going to cost a similar amount to redo the roof, to read, uh, you know, a refrigerator is going to cost you 500 bucks, whatever it is, 600 bucks. An oven's going to cost you 500 bucks. So these things are, you know, even if you're cash flow positive at a minimum in other places, you're still one problem away from being cash flow negative. So I'm very, very, I feel very strongly that you need to be significantly cash flow positive where you're actually making some decent money where you can put money away so the next capital expenditure you already have in your bank account. Okay, that is one way, that's buy and hold. Now what I do, 
is I buy property short term, right? So I, I buy, I go with the contract, I go direct to seller, I, I, I market the people who are likely to sell and I more likely to sell and I ask them if they want to sell and if they're willing to sell it to me at a discount, I go into contract. At that point, I then either assign the contract or I close on the property and either wholetail it, which means I do very limited work to it or no work to it, maybe just clean it up, put it on the market. If there's an, if there's enough of a spread between what I paid and, and, and that price, or I'll do a, a renovation. I'll do a rehab. Right, everybody knows about flicks and flicks and flips and renovations. I did that for the first four years. I rent, I got ready to every property I bought. Um, I wanted to be Tarek El Musa from Flip or Flop. That was my dream. Um, but now I'm, I'm, I have a different approach. I really look to do less. So you can do that too, right? You can find a, a property at a significant discount and you can do some improvements to it or even not do improvements to it and sell it. Some people, and it, it took me a long time, it took me years really good four or five years to really understand that you don't always need to do a lot of improvements to uh, unlock value. It's, everything is a function of the price you pay for the property. You make your money when you buy the property, right? You realize those gains when you sell the property, but you really make your money when you buy, right? So I'm in contract on a lot of properties right now, and that's just money that I know I'm going to uh, make eventually, though it could take time. So there are ways that you can invest with somebody like me, right? You can put, like, if when I close on a property, sometimes I need money, and I borrow money from private investors sometimes. So if you're interested in that, um, you can let me know, um, and you can get, you know, significant returns, double-digit returns, and you are very well protected because you have, uh, you're very, you're very well protected, either with the first lien on the property or with an operating agreement where you own the property. But either way, you're protected with a hard asset, a house that you can go see. And if anything happens to me or anything gets screwed up, you can take the property and own it. So um, th that's an easy way to invest in real estate, which is to find someone that you trust, right? You need to trust somebody uh, like me who is flipping properties or wholesaling. Well, see, for wholesaling, you don't really need private money. But if somebody is taking properties down, which means taking possession of the properties, closing on the properties, then very often they are going to need private money lenders. So if you're interested in doing that, that is a great way to make money in investing in real estate. Um, those are really the ways, the basic ways to go buy, uh, spend money investing in real estate and make money on it. It is, um, I'm getting up frozen. That was a great post. So again, there are people making money in real estate that usually are taking private investors. You can call them, call me, um, and uh, very often you can get double digit returns uh, on quick term property investments like that. Now, there are people who want to, so if you want to do what I do, so I have a course that teaches what I do. It's called, it's, you can see, get more information about it at howtoflipnewyorkcourse.com and you can do it too. And it's, you know, it takes time. I have low tire pressure in this car. It takes time, but um, it's, it's definitely doable. Anybody can do it, right? You, again, you're market, you're just spending money marketing. Uh, so uh, approaching people via phone, text, mail, all kinds of different ways and saying, hey, if you're interested in selling, I'm interested in buying. And then if they are, you know, I go and see the properties in person. A lot of people don't, they do it virtually, but you want to, at the very least, get an idea of how much repairs would be needed. And then you'd simply make an offer, make offers. And believe it or not, people will sell you properties at significant discounts so that you can make money on it. It uh, does, is this thing open? I'm waiting in front of the cleaners and now the guy just locked the door. Okay, so uh, that's one of the easier ways to one of the easier ways to make money in uh, in real estate. But you know the people who usually make the most money are buying large multifamily or commercial properties and improving them and uh, making money on them that way. Okay, and then going into the cleaners now. So I hope this was helpful. If you are interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com. If you're interested in my course, again, it's How to Flip New York course.com. If you're interested in finding out more about one-on-one -on -one coaching where I teach people, you know, hands-on how to do this, it's uh, coaching.howtoflipnewyork.com. And what else? Oh, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. Thank you for the like. Keep the likes coming. Wherever, whatever platform you're watching, please keep the likes coming. They help me very much. And what else? Uh, oh, and keep the comments coming. So this came from a comment. I would say that um, I, I, I go, I post five times a week. I don't always know what I'm talking, what to talk about. The comments really help me. The comments can be about anything, not necessarily about the topic I'm talking about in the video. If it's a simple answer, I'll just respond. If it is a 
If it is a topic that I covered recently, I'll send you a link to the videos. And if it's something new, I'll do a video on it. So uh, thank you very, very much for watching.